Welcome to Tsuchi This Week. I'm Maggie Tai. Thank you for joining us. Changsha volunteers visit the elders in the nursing home to provide them love and companionship. Singapore volunteers host an award ceremony to give blessings to New Shoot scholarship recipients. A doctor from Taipei City Hospital travels to the Philippines to exchange his medical experiences. Fifty Tsuji volunteers in Changsha, Hunan province visited a nursing home where they cut the hair and nails for the elders, as well as bath them. Many volunteers thought of their parents when caring for these seniors. They've also realized the importance of practicing filial piety. The winter is cold and harsh in Changsha. About 50 Tsuji volunteers came to the nursing home once again. They didn't forget Grandpa Wang is having his 95th birthday next month. The seniors who lived alone in the nursing home welcomed the volunteers as their family members. Grandma He, who is a resident for 20 years, has saved up a bamboo coin bank to give back to those in need. You have been caring for us mightfully. We seniors have lived a much better life ever since you came. We feel comforted, and we hope that you could continue to grow. Volunteers style of their parents and the importance of practicing filial piety when seeing these seniors. When my mother was alive, I used to be very impolite and impatient with her. You really can't waste to practice filial piety. Now my mother's gone, I don't have a chance anymore. We must cherish the time when our parents are still well and be their comfort. I sometimes got impatient with my father. I used to think that providing him material pleasure is enough. But today, I've been inspired that I should be more patient to my parents. Obedience is also a kind of filial act. Xiao Gong, who suffered from polio since a young age, was sent to the nursing home. He got emotional when seeing his parents. Everyone gave their blessings to him. The winter has warmed a little because of today's great love. Tsuji volunteers have been caring for a care recipient family for four years. In the family, 39-year-old Ling Ling is mentally challenged and paralyzed. Tsuji volunteers have been visiting and caring for her family monthly to share her mother's burden. <laughs> Ling Ling is 39 years old, but with the mind of the three-year-old. Since she's paralyzed, she has to rely on her mother's care. When she was three years old, she could still walk. Then she was very sick. We didn't have the money for treatments, so we only had injections. After that, she did not go to the toilet for 40 days. I was afraid that would become a burden to my son, so I thought about committing suicide, wishing both of us can disappear from the world. For four years, Tsuji volunteers have been visiting the family monthly. Therefore, Li Shuilan changed her mindset. During the winter, Li has been awaiting at the door for the arrival of the volunteers. Sitting on the wheelchair the volunteers have given her, Ling is also waiting as it is her birthday. The family has invited the volunteers to have a meal at their house to celebrate the special occasion. <laughs> Living's mother mentioned that meeting the volunteers is the biggest blessing. Life has changed for good ever since. 
If I don't take care of her, who will? You need to have someone to look after the family. I can do that. It's my responsibility. After putting the crown on Lenin's head, everyone wishes her happy birthday. By helping this family, the volunteers also learn about the hardship of a mother. Last year, Henan CG volunteers met the 20-year-old youth who suffers from mental illness. Coming from an impoverished family, his parents work hard to support his medical expenses. Volunteers' assistance to the family has made positive changes on him. He is now ready to give back to his parents and others in need. Psychosis is a mental disorder, leading to negative symptoms such as violence. This illness afflicts Liu Junhao's body and mind. <laughs> Please save our child. We are really poor. We spent all the money and had to borrow it from others. Ciji volunteers met Liu family during the winter aid distribution in January 2017. Love and care has continued ever since. Two years have already passed, but the footsteps of Ciji have never stopped. Their living condition has improved and the volunteers' efforts have finally played a role. <laughs> Come and take a look at your father's rough hands. Your father has worked very hard. Doesn't it give you heartache? Through these hands, you need to realize that your father had given everything. From now on, you need to shoulder this responsibility with your parents. <laughs> With medical treatment, his quality of life has been enhanced. Plus, the company of family members and volunteers have helped Liu undertake a road to recovery. In the aftermath of the campfire, affected residents are still struggling to get their lives back on track. When Mark and Christine Price returned to their house to check, they were surprised to find vegetables they plant are still growing and a patch survived. Although it is estimated that it will take more than 10 years to complete a reconstruction, they are staying optimistic. A barbecue made it. Ann Lee. We got a dog here. Survived the fire. Come here, baby. Oh. So she's a survivor. He's been here the entire time. She never left. Front door was right here. And we had our living room. And then a wall. And then two more bedrooms. Life is uh, what it throws at you. What you live through just makes you tougher. I don't know if it's going to work anymore. I'll have to clean it up and see if I can make it work. There's a few things. This was my grandmother's squash blossom necklace and a bunch of my trade beads. So sad. All my neat stuff. But we'll persevere and be back. Look at this. Here's the three zucchinis on the vine still. Oh my goodness, I wonder if there's any in there. And you can eat the tops of these too, for greens. I mean, I wouldn't eat them now, I'd probably have to cut them back. Yeah, before we leave, if you, I'm, I think I'm gonna pick a couple more bell peppers. I'm gonna take them back and try eating them. I need a good salad. <laughs> See when it bends like that and doesn't break? That means it's still alive. It's still alive. This is the first time I've been up here to see it since the fire on this particular spot. This is really cool that they made it. It's a lot of love goes into those plants. <laughs> but they, they stick really We well. uh, like to treat each other as we like to be treated out here. And the foundation helping me uh, was great because what they stand for is uh, to giving and sharing and helping the needy people. It's a beautiful thing. They gave me $800, 
and a blanket and some really interesting reading. It's just the nicest thing that anybody could even help with people like this. I desperately needed the help and the sharing that these guys are doing is just above and beyond what normal people do. 10 years after I rebuild and plant the trees, it'll be green again and we won't even hardly notice a fire ever took place. Singapore City volunteers have been helping underprivileged students to pursue education. At the New Shoot Scholarship Award ceremony this year, the volunteers encouraged the students to do recycling and contribute to the society. Singapore City Chapter has held its New Shoot Scholarship Award ceremony through a stage play The recipients share their experiences at the recycling station. They hope to invite more people to start doing recycling. This year, the award is a little different than before. Such volunteers separated the recipients into groups and arranged different activities for them. The goal is to convey the concepts of gratefulness, respect and love into their hearts. How is it interactive? Let me understand that our parents actually have kind intentions and they just want the best for us. All. So it's like it's good to actually, you know, even though if you're angry at them, sometimes you don't understand. I think we should actually take a step back and let ourselves cool down and remember that they really want the best for us. The Ciqing share how they interact with seniors at the nursing homes, hoping to inspire the scholarship recipients. We really want to give them support to let them realize how to give back to the society later on and how to pass down love to one another. Besides providing financial assistance, the volunteers also encourage the students to pay the love forward. They hope the students can understand the value of selfless giving. In early December, a Taiwanese family traveled to Perth, Australia. They have encountered a severe car accident and the husband lost his life, leaving his wife and daughter behind. The volunteers immediately went to provide them comfort and assistance before they returned to Taiwan. A horrific head-on crash caused the Liu family with a broken heart due to losing their father in the accident. Liu Qingyuan sadly passed away in the surgery room. His wife had a serious fracture in the left calf, while his daughter had minor injuries. The next day, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and such volunteers went immediately to the hospital to care for the family. When the accident happened, I saw my leg was deformed. Later, the doctors tried to put it back to the right place. However, they could not successfully complete the procedure. After the loss of her husband, the volunteers became the strength of Miss Liu. Besides staying by her side, they also helped with the funeral, hoping to provide the best care as much as possible. Mindanao is the second largest remote island in the Philippines. Such volunteers have to travel for a long time to conduct medical home visits there. Despite that, they still overcome the distance to visit the people in need. After crossing the muddy road, city volunteers have arrived at the little boy's house in Bhutan, north of Davao. Ayo. Three-year-old Sebasti was born with a tumor on his right face. No doctors in Mindanao have agreed to operate on him. From the visit, the volunteers found out Sebasti's family of six lived in a sheet metal house next to a large gutter. His house was built with sheet metal and wooden planks. They sleep on the floor. They live next to the sewage gutter, so there are a lot of mosquitoes. It is really bad for their health. Sebasti's mom is a single mother. The family of six relies on Sebasti's mother and grandfather's monthly income of 200 U.S. dollars. For the past several years, Sebasti's mother has been seeking help from international organization through the Internet. She finally found and received help from the Ziji Foundation. I'm very happy that my son now has a bigger chance to undergo the necessary surgery. Thank God, thanks to the Ziji Foundation. Meanwhile, another patient, Rolando, is not as lucky. Hi. Good morning. 
60-year-old Rolando had to remove his entire nose a year ago because his skin cancer cells have spread. He thought he could get a chance to reconstruct his nose in Taiwan. However, he relapsed again. His only son, who is caring for Rolando, prays that there will be a miracle. I hope to find a way to help us and extend my father's life. After undergoing surgery, Rolando occasionally sells salted fish, making about four dollars a day. With a meager and unstable income, he cannot afford to buy medicines or pay for transportation costs to go see the doctor. Since he cannot afford to buy medication, he is not taking them. He does not use any ointments either. He simply changes the dressings. Facing these Filipino residents who have suffered from poverty because of illness, city volunteers try their best to lessen their life pressure and financial burdens. A resurgent Xia Yiran from Taipei City Hospital has been invited to the Philippines to exchange his experiences with the medical professionals at the Southern Philippine Medical Center. While abroad, Dr. Xia diagnosed many patients with serious head and neck tumor issues. If necessary, some patients might eventually travel to Taiwan to receive the life-altering procedures that they have long been waiting for. <laughs> Three-year-old Sebastian cries as he's seen by the doctor. Dr. Xiang Yiran calms the little boy as he checks the tumor on his face. Sebasti was born with a large tumor on the right side of his face. Doctors in Davao are not able to conduct the necessary surgery. Through the Southern Philippines Medical Center, the doctor from Taiwan was finally allowed to come and diagnose his illness. Since it is benign, we should be able to operate on him. We need to have a biopsy first to ensure it is not neuroma. Then we should be able to conduct the necessary surgery. If the boy can undergo the surgery, the city volunteers will help the boy travel to Taiwan to seek medical help. They hope the boy can undergo the surgery before school starts. This way he can enjoy a healthy and happy life. The 26-centimeter tumor has been on Christie's chin for 18 years. Although the tumor is benign, it can still become life-threatening. has been here for many years and is quite large. If we don't remove the tumor, it will grow even larger. It will eventually affect the patient's brain down the road. Christy and another patient that Dr. Xia treated last year both have benign amyloblastic fibroma. Recalling how she had to drop out of the school because people laugh at her, Christy cried. Now the doctor from Taiwan is here to save her life. I think this, this is the answer of my prayer for how many years. I'm very happy. Sebasti and Christy both delayed their treatment because of the inconvenience of transportation and a lack of medical resources. 60-year-old Rolando delayed his treatment for skin cancer as well and had to remove his entire nose. This place lacks medical resources and the transportation is inconvenient. Therefore, the patients do not seek medical help until their tumors grow too big in size and start to affect their daily lives. But most of the time, it's already delayed and has its consequences. To help more head and neck tumor patients, the oral surgeons at the Taipei City Hospital will exchange their experiences with the medical professionals in the Philippines. If necessary, they will refer patients to seek medical help in Taiwan. Five years after a massive earthquake, Tsuji continues to maintain strong ties with the Philippine city of Bohol. Tsuji continues to help disadvantaged students pursue their education through scholarships. And on the third Sunday of each month, they offer a humanistic class to nourish and calm their anxious hearts. This small bamboo house cannot limit the dream of college for Anthonette, who was the recipient of a Tsuji grant to pursue her studies. Such volunteers teach me that no matter how much you have or how much you lack, everyone's life should be valued. You have helped us so much, especially letting me go forward in life and continue my studies in school. Such aunties and uncles have really inspired me to want to become a good person. His father, who works in a kitchen, raises four children alone. He is financially unable to support everyone. 
With a little help from Zhiji, he is able to breathe a little easier. Uh, we are giving them and their family a chance to have a better life. Education is the future. In another case, a mother and daughter once lived together, but a year ago the mother died because of cancer, leaving Trisha feeling sad and lonely. After Trisha's mother passed away, Zhiji volunteers helped a lot. I don't talk very much. I don't know how to express my thanks. It is only because of the existence of Zhiji that I have the opportunity to realize my dreams. Each scholarship recipient is getting the chance to fly toward their dreams. The humanities class at Zhiji runs for them every month is also like a guiding light, helping them on the correct path in life. Seven years have passed since the devastating earthquake and tsunami that struck the northeast region of Japan. Tokyo Tsuji volunteers held the annual year-end celebration blessing ceremony with the residents of Ishinomaki. Some of them even came with their bamboo coin bag, which was filled with plenty of love, ready to help others in need. It's a cold winter morning in the city of Ishinomaki, located in Miyagi Prefecture. It's once again the end of the year. Tsuji volunteers kept their promise every year to come and conduct the year-end blessing ceremony with the local residents. <laughs> every year, Okiwa Imatsu had never missed the event. He received his bamboo coin bank in the very first year. For seven years straight, he has been saving a couple of coins each day, hoping that his small gesture can make a big difference. I would always put in a few coins in it each day, and then at the annual year-end blessing ceremony, I will always bring the coin bank back to you guys. The ceremony began with a social adaptation performance, followed by a documentary video. While watching the video, many were touched by all the events that had taken place during the year. I was invited by Mr. Kameyama. He told me that I must come and attend the blessing ceremony. From that point on, I've gotten to know more about Tsuji, your missions and efforts. I couldn't hold back my tears. I was deeply moved by today's program. You've helped so many whom are suffering around the world. For a Buddhist foundation, it's really impressive. Mr. Kameyama Shiyoshi is the person who the member of parliament had mentioned. He met Tsuji through the earthquake relief distributions. Later in 2015, he dedicated himself to the volunteer work. This year, all the posters on the bulletin board were both designed and made by him. I distributed the posters to each shop around the community. I put them up in my neighborhood too. I wanted to invite more people to get to know and join Tsuji. After witnessing the care and sincerity that Tsuji had given, he wanted to let more people to come and experience the volunteers' unconditional giving. Tsuji Danshu Retreat in New Taipei City hosted a Christmas event and invited parents and children to celebrate together. We'll leave you with these images and thank you for joining us. Goodbye.